Jacob Sexton Military Suicide Prevention Act does, and it's going to be part of NDAA this year, the, the defense bill, is for every, every member of our military, whether it's guard, whether it's reserve, whether it's active duty, that they have an annual mental health assessment, just like they do with our physical health assessments, that they have a, a, a mental health assessment. There's somebody they can talk to face to face to say, you know what, I'm not putting it all together. I could use some help. And, and whether it's it's personal or it's guy that they get that done. And that would be for guard and reserve as well. And so what we're doing as part of the bill is we're coordinating DOD with uh, the Department of Health, with our local mental health professionals, so that a, a guardsman from a rural town can get help right there from the local mental health professional. And it would be part of the program. Additionally, that um, they don't have to worry about their careers. That if you go and see somebody, and you talk to somebody, that you're not going to wind up a month later not becoming a sergeant or a major because they have some questions about you. But that's no longer in any way, shape, or form permitted to be part of the equation. And finally, that we're trying to find best practices. So, um, as we are wont to do occasionally, the Navy has their program, the Army has their program, the Air Force has their program, the Marines have their program, and everybody's program is the best program. But what we're trying to do is find the parts of each that have the best results and put them together. Because we want our young men and women to come home and to be happy and to be at peace. We work with the um, Israeli Defense Forces who had the same issue and they reduced suicides by 75%. So we've tried to partner with them with good friends and I don't want to talk forever, but I want to tell you this. It is the families that keep our men and women together who are fighting. It is the families who when they are in the most unpleasant place and the most difficult part of uh, Afghanistan, when they are out of the Pakistan border and they're being shot at every day. You know, when I've been with them, and I know Chris the same way, when we're with them, they always tell us one thing, look, we'll handle this over here, I just want to get back to see you. And so to all of you, the sacrifices you made, the uh, heartache you endured, we had a young man at a football game out at Notre Dame just uh, a little, little bit ago, um, an American hero, Corey, and Corey had 10 deployments. He was the president's guest at the state of the Union. 10 deployments, was hit by an IED, 14 surgeries, and his dad goes everywhere with him. His dad was standing right next to him. And I said to Corey, is there anything I can do for you today? He goes, a win would be fine here. <laughs> If that's your biggest problem, we're in good shape today. But his dad is uh, Corey's window to the world now. And Corey has paid such a price for our country. And he said to me while we were there, he said, you know, we're so lucky to live in this country. And that's it's exactly the truth. So to all of you, thank you for letting me be here. Um, we have a great partner in Chris Gibson, who I served with uh, in the house as well. He's younger, smarter, better looking, and more talented. But other than that, uh, he's got nothing. <laughs> so thank you very much.